Hi, my name is Emma and this video will contain spoilers of the real-life case that this TV show is based on. I watched this TV show and I just could not shake it, I could not forget it and I asked you guys on Twitter and Instagram if you wanted me to talk about it and you did so here I am. Today we're going to be talking about the real-life case of Gypsy Rose and the TV show that is based on the case, The Act. I'm going to discuss the differences and the similarities between the TV show and what happened in real life but be warned, this is going to get dark. <laughs> In the early 90s in Louisiana, 24-year-old Claudine Blanchard, known as Dee Dee, gave birth to a baby girl who she named Gypsy Rose. This was after her husband's love of the band Guns N' Roses. Soon after, Dee Dee and her husband Rod filed for divorce. Gypsy grew up a very protected child and was raised by her mother, although her father was still involved in her life. When Gypsy was about three years old, she had to stay in the hospital repeatedly for overnight stays because her mother claimed that she was suffering from sleep apnea, although the doctors could find nothing wrong with her. When Gypsy was around seven years old, she had an accident when she was out with her uncle and she fell and scraped her knee. She was taken to hospital by her mother who claimed that she would need multiple surgeries. Gypsy returned home in a wheelchair that she was now confined to. But it did not end there. Dee Dee insisted that Gypsy had multiple medical illnesses including leukemia, muscular dystrophy, epilepsy, respiratory issues, that is the sleep apnea. She was vision impaired, hearing impaired and she also wore a hearing aid because of this and Dee Dee claimed that Gypsy had brain damage. Gypsy was a frail frame that required a feeding tube and a wheelchair at all times. She was homeschooled by Dee Dee and to the outside world Gypsy was struggling daily and Dee Dee was her full-time carer. They were inseparable. During a period of Gypsy's childhood they lived with Dee Dee's mother, Gypsy's grandma, who suddenly became ill. But Dee Dee had problems of her own. She was arrested for writing bad checks. After she got out of jail she took Gypsy to go live in public housing which was paid for by public assistance because of Gypsy's medical conditions. They also had a huge part of their income coming from Rod, Gypsy's father, for child support. Unfortunately, their residence was devastated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. In 2008, Dee Dee and Gypsy moved into a house that was built for them by Habitat for Humanity. This is an international non-for-profit organization that builds houses for those in need. Growing up with such immense health issues and now the devastation of Katrina, Gypsy gained a lot of attention and was flown around the world to attend all types of charity events. The pair took free trips to Disney World and free concerts with backstage VIP passes. They also received many gifts and a lot of money from the public. In addition to this, Rod, Gypsy's father, was still paying child support. After all, Gypsy required a full-time carer in which Dee Dee had taken the position of. But as a police officer would later say about Gypsy and Dee Dee, not everything is as it seems. Gypsy could walk. In fact, she didn't have any medical conditions at all. The only thing that was wrong with Gypsy was that she had a lazy eye and required some correcting. But the rest of it was all made up. Feeding tube, the seizures, everything. It's a little bit foggy here how much Gypsy understood when she was growing up about how she didn't have these conditions, although she did know that she could walk and I think that that was a major tip off for her. But something she didn't know was that Dee Dee had actually lied to her and told her that she was several years younger than she was and she was now essentially an adult living as a child. As Gypsy grew more aware of her situation and how sheltered she was, she started going online secretly and she was really interested in the opposite sex. Dee Dee was really strict and as soon as Gypsy showed signs of growing up or you know, interest in boys, her mother would get aggressive and Gypsy alleges that her mother Dee Dee used to beat her and tie her up as a way to control her. In 2011, Gypsy met a 25 year old man at a sci-fi convention. Gypsy now had a secret Facebook account under the name of Emma Rose where she continued to talk to him. This is when she made her first attempt to escape her mother, but she was soon found in a hotel room with the man and she was severely punished. In 2012, Gypsy joined a Christian dating website, of course secretly, where she met Nicholas, a troubled boy from Wisconsin. They developed a secret relationship. Their relationship was a strange dependency as they both had issues in their own personal lives. Nicholas introduced Gypsy to BDSM and the idea of role playing. At the same time, Gypsy was secretly pocketing some of the money that was given to them by the public around the house, just cash. She was buying things online, but she was also putting money away for her own savings. One year later, Gypsy was desperate to meet her boyfriend, Nicholas, but because she was under her mother's lock and key, it seemed impossible. They ended up hatching a plan that would allow them to meet in public, pretending like they were strangers. They met at 
at a movie theater where Dee Dee took Gypsy to see Cinderella. Gypsy and Nicholas managed to sneak off and have sex in the cinema bathroom. But now Gypsy was at breaking point. She realized she'd never be able to have the life she wanted. Her mother would never let her live as an independent adult. So she asked Nicholas to kill her mother. One night, as planned, Gypsy waited for her mother to fall asleep for the last time. She let Nicholas into the house, gave him a knife, and she went into the bathroom so she wouldn't hear any screams. Nicholas went into Dee Dee's room and stabbed her several times while she was sleeping. Afterwards, Nicholas and Gypsy had sex in Gypsy's room on her bed after killing her mother, and then they packed and they left. They went to a nearby hotel, and the next day they mailed the murder weapon back to Nicholas house which they went to by Greyhound bus and a few days later they were arrested the bizarre thing about this is it was the first time that a lot of people had seen Gypsy walk as she walked out of her house when they found Dee Dee dead in the house they had no idea where Gypsy was thinking that she was frail and she needed help they had no idea she had just walked away from the murder scene and there was all this CCTV evidence of her going into the hotel you know going to buy the bus ticket and she is walking. She's wearing a wig and she's walking. It's bizarre. And it must have been so outrageous to see that for the first time. This is how people figured out what was going on. But that's pretty much the gist of the true life story. There's so many details in there that I could go on forever. And trust me, the more you get into the details, the more questions you have. But in 2017, a documentary about the case was brought out called Dead Mummy Dearest, which I highly recommend. And it really got me fixated on this case. I should mention, it is suggested that Dee Dee had Munchausen by proxy. Munchausen syndrome by proxy is a mental health problem in which the caregiver makes up or causes illness or injury to a person under his or her care, such as a child, an elderly adult, or a person who has a disability. Because vulnerable people are the victims it's a form of child abuse or elder abuse. And you don't hear a lot of details from these cases about this because often the child, if it's a child in the situation or the person who is the victim, they don't live to tell the tale. And I don't know if you caught on to what I said earlier, they didn't mention this in the TV show, but Dee Dee was actually accused of making her mother sick. Um, and she, when she lived with her, she got sick, and when she moved away, she got better. It is horrifying stuff. So when the act was released this year in March, I was so interested in how the creators were going to tell this story because it's such an immense, crazy ride, and I was floored by the result. This is an eight-part TV series that really highlights some of the most intense moments that these people have gone through in their lives, and Bravo. The show features Patricia Arquette as Dee Dee and Joey King as Gypsy Rose. Helen Worthy plays a convincing Nicholas, while Chloe Sevigny, who I love, and Anna Sophie Robb play their neighbors. Anna Sophie's role as Lacey was so important because it is said that Gypsy did confide in a neighbor and Lacey's character showed the concern that the audience was really feeling, while Chloe's role as Mel acted as the audience's skepticism. The whole story is so confusing and detailed that it really helps having this other family that also lives in like a cul-de-sac with them so that they can come out and be like, what is going on? And you feel the same as them so you know that what is happening is not normal. It really helps to solidify your doubts as an outsider. As I said, the show is made up of eight episodes and it just gets more tangled as you go. And because there's no one peak, there's many. <laughs> Finding out Gypsy can walk, meeting her boyfriend in a public place, the whole BDSM drama, of course, Dee Dee getting murdered and then them getting found. There's never a dull moment. The pacing's really well thought out and every scene means something. And if it's not a payoff for this episode, it will be later. So every scene is so well constructed. There's so much information and there's no dead air. The thing about this show is that you can do all the research, watching the documentaries, see the interviews, but to see how it's played out and how far it really went gave me such a better understanding of what happened that you just can't get from watching a documentary or from reading about the case. Seeing it played out, it makes a lot more sense even though it's completely insane. It's so intriguing and hypnotizing. Every moment of this show left me wanting more and I don't know if this is just me, I just was hypnotized by it as I said before. It was so dark and it just, and you knew it was gonna get worse. In fact, I knew how it was gonna turn out in the end but it was just so fascinating. But something really impressive about the show is as frightening as it was, they really got all of the details down packed. The details between what really happened and the TV show, 
the similarities are going to shake you. And so I've put together a little bit of side by side so you can see how much they really thought out these little moments and even objects, they really went all the way with props and set design and I really applaud them for that. So if nothing else I've said is going to convince you to watch the TV show and you're interested in the case, this probably will. I remember my mom had gave me this little glass house and she said, this one day this will be real. And now it finally is. The funny thing is, a few years ago, she had gave me this little glass house. And she said, one day, this will be yours. And now it finally is. This, this is an ongoing investigation. And I want to start off with saying things are not always as they appear. This is an ongoing investigation. And I want to say that things are not always as they appear. I'm in the truth is, okay, I'll admit it. I did actually stop. The truth is, okay, I'll admit it. I did actually stab. Also, I think I do have to mention Gypsy's voice. She has this really high-pitched, unique voice. And a lot of people said, I saw Ben, shout out to Ben, one of my patrons, who said that he was really annoyed by the voice. But it is exactly what Gypsy sounded like. And I think it's really important because essentially she was a child living as an adult. So her voice has a lot to do with her character. But now you've seen those similarities, the differences, let's talk about them. Because although this TV show makes it clear time and time again that it's dramatized, the truth is far more dramatic. As I said in the start, my rundown of the story, what they didn't include in the TV show was all of their flights everywhere, their jet sitting around, them going to concerts for free to Disneyland. They did, of course, refer to Disneyland at one point, but they made it seem like she was very much sheltered and they never left the house. I think that the true story is so much more dramatic, the fact that they had conned the whole world. They really didn't show it like that. They also changed a lot of the relationship between a Gypsy and her father, where in real life they had a completely different relationship that they don't show in the act. And of course, there's the abuse. It is inferred in the TV show. Um, she gets tied up, things like that. But uh, Gypsy alleges that her mother used to hit her, that she used to tie her up and also put bells on the door so she could tell where she was. And it seems a lot different to what was portrayed during the series. The real life Gypsy Rose pleaded guilty to second degree murder and is serving 10 years, while her boyfriend has been given life. Do I believe killing her mother was justified? Absolutely not. This whole thing is just horrific and there is no answer. Unfortunately, there is no black and white answer. This whole thing is just abuse over abuse and that's the cycle, unfortunately. It's one of the darkest cases and it's just so crazy to me that the person who was the victim at the start changed that and she became the murderer or the person who planned the murder and now she's doing time. I, I mean, what can you say? That is, that's just insane. I was really floored by this TV show. You guys know I don't normally do full reviews on TV shows, some of them, but there have to be standouts or there has to be something I need to say. And I need to tell you guys to watch this. Do not sleep on this series. It was insane. And I watched it in two sittings. It was just crazy. And the second episode is called Teeth. Nuff said, nuff said. That was horrifying, I think I cried. Now I've spoken about this, I feel like I can let it go. Have you guys seen the act? What did you think down below? Are you gonna watch it? Why won't you watch it if you're not going to? Let me know what you think about the Gypsy Rose case. It is insane. What do you think about her sentence? Wow, um, these are big questions. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky, bye.